everybody. I hope that you are having a great day. I am making a cereal box canvas today and I thought that we could just do a little three or four part little mini series about how to make a cereal box canvas and do a mixed media on that cereal box canvas. Here's one I made a while back. It says she made herself happy. This is just a I painted mixed media piece and I did a little bit of stencil work with some homemade molding paste and that sort of thing. But I wanted to take you through the process of making a cereal box journal. It's so easy and it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to kind of practice on a canvas before you invest money in purchasing a canvas. Canvases are not cheap and I think that's one reason that um, that I, you know, they don't speak to my frugal nature. Maybe that's it. <laughs> the first thing that you want to do is close up your cereal box. And all that I do with my cereal boxes is add a little bit of masking tape on the ends. And that creates a little bit of strength right there on the end. And then I do that on each end. Um, don't forget your your box tops. I'm not going to take the box top off here because I forgot. But the school, there's a school right down the road, and um, I save my box tops for them. So if you're working with boxes, take off your box tops because there's probably a school around you that would love to have them. All right, next thing, I'm just going to kind of cover the top of this box just like this. Pretty easy. Turn it around. I can see I've got a little bubble here. I'm not going to worry about that. That's no big deal. Sometimes you get bubbles when you work with boxes. I've also noticed that boxes are... They're, they're flimsy, you guys. Uh, you know, we used to get uh, products in boxes that were quite sturdy. But now I noticed when I made my flow-ish journal that the hamburger helper box that I was using was incredibly flimsy and I thought hmm you know there may be a recycling issue for those boxes they may just be making them a little more lightweight so they're easier to recycle I I don't really know but I did notice that and I thought it was kind of interesting because you know box aficionado here <laughs> use a lot of boxes Next thing we're going to do is take a ruler, and all we're going to do is just measure down an inch on each, um, on each side. And then we're going to join those lines and cut out a rectangle. So let me grab my glasses. I'm really sorry about my dirty hands, y'all. I've been out in the yard um, digging plants. I, you know, it also does not speak to my frugal nature to purchase plants and dirt <laughs> from a store. So I have some beautiful plants in my backyard and not a whole lot of plants in my front yard. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just move some, some of my pretty stuff from my backyard into my front yard. So that's what I've been doing today, digging and digging. All right, so we're measuring an inch, making a line. Making a line, making a line, and then we'll just join our lines. Sorry, I think I got that one wrong. Whoops, I did. Good grief. Okay. I think I got that one wrong too. Good gosh. Sorry, y'all. Doing a very good job. There we go. All right. And now we'll draw a line here. And you can see what you're doing. You're just, you're kind of just going up an inch, making a line. Now, I cut my rectangle out with an X-Acto knife, and that, that worked pretty good. My X-Acto knife is a little bit dull, so I need to remember to get some, some new blades for that sucker. All right, so there we go. Now we've got our lines. Can you see those okay? Might need to darken those up for you. Here we go. All right, 
use an exacto knife and what you're going to do y'all is cut out this rectangle don't throw that rectangle away we're going to use the rectangle and here we go there we go all right cut out this rectangle cut here 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 and here when you're finished your box is going to look something like this the rectangle that you cut out you're going to glue into your box this will kind of reinforce the front of your box so it won't be quite so squishy you know when you're trying to work on it you can tell that that's i mean that's fairly sturdy right there next thing that you're going to want to do after you get that done is to paint your box well, i've painted my box with some valspar uh, a color sample that I've had for a while. I bought this and it's a cream in my coffee color sample, but I needed like a very stark white. So I've been using that color sample to to paint things in the art studio. So that color sample didn't go to waste, of course. I painted my box and I painted the front twice. You can still see that it says Cheerios right here. No worries. That is, I think about that as just a layer. I think about what you can see over here as another layer. That's a text layer, right? You know, this is a layer. Even where you've um, you've used your tape, that's a you know that's a cool crafty element right there. That's a layer. I am going to um, let my canvas. I let my canvas dry overnight. I thought that was a pretty. I thought that was a good idea. And um, it's, it's best to prep your canvas, to make your canvas, prep your canvas, and then kind of let it just sit overnight. And that kind of cures everything. If you want to use gesso or, you know, if you want to use a different color of paint or, you know, do whatever you want to do. You're, you're just kind of trying to to cover things and as much as possible and then make yourself a, a place to 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 do your mixed media um like i said if your paint doesn't cover your box that is no problem so don't worry about that if you don't have enough paint and you're you're having some bleed through don't worry about that either i think that a lot of times we just kick the joy right out of making art because we um we're trying to be too specific about it or we're trying to be a little too perfect about it or whatever and really y'all I mean it's it's just it's meant to be fun so just have fun with it and honestly when you're making your canvas you may want to make a couple because kind of once you get started doing this technique it uh it gets kind of addictive like those flowish journals that that I was doing last week it's like gee whiz I could just do that forever all right I've got everything painted I let this dry last night but I think since it's a pretty day today I'm gonna let this dry one more day um, you don't have to do that but I like to let my canvas kind of cure so there we go you guys we have made us a nice little canvas in probably less than uh eight minutes or so so join me tomorrow tomorrow we'll be layering on some backgrounds for our mixed media and we're going to finish this off by doing a portrait so join me tomorrow for part two of our canvas cereal box mixed media <laughs> see y'all soon bye